Pigmented skin lesions on palms, soles and nails are uncommon in primary care. When your colleagues know you are using a dermoscope, you will become their go-to person for a quick second opinion. Don't be surprised if you start seeing a few more patients with nail problems. In this video, we're going to focus on nails and I'm going to give you five simple rules to help you. Critical for your success is to first understand the structure of nails. Let's label up this picture of a nail. The lununa is the distal part of the nail matrix, visible through the nail plate. Melanocytes live in the proximal and distal nail matrix, but unlike in normal skin, where they are constantly providing protective melanin to the keratinocytes, these melanocytes are usually asleep and not producing that dark pigment melanin. This is why nail plates are usually clear and not mented. Toenails grow at an average rate of 1.5 millimeters a month, meaning a great toenail, if removed, will regrow over around 12 months. Fingernails grow faster. Tell me, what's this? There's more than one nail affected. It's yellow in color and appears to be starting at the free edge of the nail. All primary care clinicians should be good at recognizing the most common cause for chronic nail discoloration other than paint, and that's fungal nail infections. You got that one, right? Okay, clever clogs, what about this? It's only one nail this time, but again, note the color. And again, it's starting from the free nail edge. It's fungal, right? Well, what about this? It's only one toe, and this time it's affecting the whole of the nail plate. Are you 100% sure it's not one of these, an amelanotic melanoma? Up to 50% of nail melanomas lack melanin pigmentation, being called hypoamelanotic. I've seen a colleague make this mistake, treating a presumed toe fungal nail infection, only to realize gradually that this isn't fungal. Any destruction of that nail bed is a big red flag. My first rule for nails is learn to diagnose and treat fungal nail infections. My experience is this isn't very well taught at postgraduate level. And here's my quick tips on fungal nail infections. One, not all fungal nails need treating. Discuss the pros and cons with the patient, especially if they're elderly and with no nail symptoms. Two, learn to take nail clippings. Invest a few quid in one of these bad boys to get clippings. Normal scissors just won't cut it. Don't ask the patient to get clippings. They're in Invariably negative. I get as large a chunk of that nail as my patients will tolerate, as close to that cuticle as possible. Three, when you're all lined up, ready to squeeze that trigger, put your other hand over the nail or the clipping will be launched into orbit, never to be seen again. Send that clipping off as many as you can in a dry pot. Four, you get two results. Microscopy within a week, they look for fungal hyphae, and three weeks later, a culture. If either test is positive, you can treat it as a fungal nail infection. False negatives, however, do occur. Sometimes I repeat the clippings. Sometimes I treat them anyway. My experience, topical treatments have poor compliance rates and therefore lower success, especially if more than one nail is involved. I prefer oral treatments as first line. Tabinafin, 250 milligrams daily for an adult for three months, and then review the nail. Side effects are uncommon, but I always warn about stomach upsets because I've seen that. And some people recommend a liver function test before treatment. Check drug interactions because there are many with tabinafin. Oral medication gets embedded into that new nail each day. The fungus can't penetrate the medicated nail. And as the nail grows out, the fungus is pushed out with it. I sometimes continue for another three months, i.e. six months treatment in total. Bear in mind, it can take up to 12 months to get full clearance of that nail. Quick tip, any patient you refer for a joint replacement, especially of the hip, check for fungal nails. I've had a patient wait two years and on the day of a surgery, the anaesthetist pulled back the covers, took one look at her toenails and canceled the surgery. Fungal nails are an infection risk for any new joint. Let's go back to our nail diagram. I have a question for you and it's vital you understand the answer. Where do you think melanomas start? Is it A, at the proximal nail fold? B, at the nail matrix? C, at the nail bed? Or D, at the hyponychium? Do you think 25% occur in each of these locations or is it some other ratio? Make sure your totals number up to 100%. What do you think? Here's the answer. They all start at the matrix. That's because the nail matrix contains the melanocytes. This gives us our second rule. If it's not connected to the nail matrix, it's not a melanoma, it's something else. This second rule is really helpful because the most common cause for nail color changes is from injury. This 60 year old lady came to see me having noticed this dark discoloration on her fourth toe. She was worried it might be a cancer. There were no symptoms and no history of injury that she could remember, which isn't uncommon. Note the following, it's not near the nail matrix. That's reassuring. The color is a reddish brown. New hemorrhage tends to be redder. Older blood darkens as the blood degrades. Dots and peripheral streaks are typical in trauma and hemorrhage. Here's a few other examples. If this was a melanoma, has it arisen separately in each of these locations? 
Streaks often look like this. Again, note the reddish colour. What if the trauma is to the base of the nail, however? Look at this great toe. Although it can affect any toe, melanoma of the nail most often affects the great toe and thumb, accounting for 75 to 90% of cases. What if I told you that this was my toe and I don't remember any trauma? What should I do? If it's a melanoma, what's going to happen? It will slowly grow and extend as a band like this. However, if it's trauma and hemorrhage, it won't get any bigger, but will slowly migrate down the nail as it grows out. What did I do? I decided to monitor it. You can do this with your own patients. If you think it's trauma and hemorrhage, closely monitoring it is a very reasonable choice. But because nails grow slowly, it can take three months to notice any real changes. I couldn't wait that long, so I checked it again after six weeks, and here are the images. In particular, I was looking for Hutchinson's sign. This is where pigment extends into the proximal nail fold, suggesting spread. Although valuable, it's not always an accurate predictor of melanoma, and you can get a false Hutchinson sign. Still, with great interest, I checked my nail for any signs of pigment, and this is what I saw. Note the normal hairpin vessels at the base of the nail, the cuticle attached to the nail plate, and a nice demarcation lie with no melanin spreading into the nail fold. Phew! The colour also is banded across the nail, and very reddish brown in colour, with lots of streaks. Six weeks later, it was like this. I watched it slowly grow out from there. Here's my nail, nine months later. I live to fight another day. My third rule is, know the signs of subungal hemorrhage, a common cause of nail pigment changes, and it can fool you into thinking it's a melanoma if you don't know what you're looking for. Look at this graph of 100 consecutive individuals with nail melanoma. What do you notice that could help us in our search for nail melanomas? It's simply this. If your patient is under 30 and they have nail changes, it isn't caused by a melanoma. You can get nevi causing pigmentation of the nail, but these are benign and it won't be a melanoma. The peak age for a melanoma diagnosis in the nail is between 60 and 80 years. This gives us rule four. Age matters. If they're less than 30, it won't be a melanoma causing those nail changes. The melanocytes within the nail matrix are usually asleep and not producing melanin. However, if a small group of melanocytes decide to start producing melanin, this is what happens. A band of pigment is formed within the nail, and we call this melanichia. Pigmented bands within nails occur in around 1% of white-skinned individuals, but it is very common in people with dark skin, occurring in an estimated 100% of African Americans by the age of 50, and around 20% of Asians. This is called functional melanichia, and there are many causes. There is no proliferation of melanocytes. They have just been activated in producing melanin and therefore produce coloured bands within the nail. What signs should alert you to the fact that this isn't just simple melanichia? If the melanocytes are multiplying, then you'll get a shape like this. The nail is a time machine. On this fingernail, the tip shows you what was happening in the nail matrix around six months ago. It's narrower than the base, and it shows that this lesion is slowly growing. This doesn't have to be a malignant melanoma. This could be due to a benign cause, such as a nevus or a lentigo. If the pigment extends to involving the proximal nail fold, in other words, Hutchinson's sign, that is worrying, and a poorer prognostic sign at that. A presentation, always take a photograph and measurements of the band to include in their patient records. A new single pigmented band in only one nail is a concern, as indeed is any nodule, ulceration, bleeding, any nail plate dystrophy such as thinning, cracking or distortion, which shouldn't occur in functional melanichia. So who gets nail or subungal melanomas? Unlike the other melanoma types, they aren't associated with ultraviolet exposure and therefore occur equally in all skin types. They account around for 4% of malignant melanoma in a white skin population, other types of melanoma being more common. However, in African populations, they account for 75% of their melanomas and 25% in Asian populations. As with all melanomas, the earlier the diagnosis is made, the better the prognosis for your patient. This gives us rule five. If you see a new and growing pigment band in a nail, especially in a darker skin type, get a specialist opinion as soon as possible. Our role in primary care is to rule out the common benign causes, such as that fungal infection or nail trauma. A new pigmented band in a young person younger than 30 I'd be very reassuring. A nevus is most likely the cause, but if they or you are worried, a second opinion is very reasonable. Secondary care may just monitor it for a few months because the gold standard for a diagnosis is a nail biopsy, and that isn't without trauma to your patient. Would you like to have someone to biopsy your nail matrix? Ouch! To keep your dermoscopic brain cells growing, please watch this video here, and if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please give a thumbs up in the comment section below. Training a primary care dermoscopist for every general practice.